Okay, today I had the student email me a problem on how to calculate uh, various future values of different cash flows over time. And so I thought I'd go ahead and do this problem for you guys. Uh, I'm going to do it using Excel, uh, calculating the future value of each one of these cash flows. And then also, uh, since they're different, I can use something called the NPV to find the present value of them all very quickly. And then once you get the present value, then you can take them out into the future you know, as one lump sum. So let me go ahead and read the problem first. Um, given a 3% interest rate, compute the year 6 future value of deposits made in years 1, 2, 3, and 4 of uh, these four amounts. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, put this information in. Uh, we have the interest rate is uh, 3%. And I'm going to go ahead and draw the cash flow timeline the cash flow diagram so we basically have one two three four five six years and we want the future value and we have four four uh, cash flows out and then we have and we want to find the future value of all four of those at a rate of three percent so i'm going to go ahead and hit, hit escape so we have your zero one two three four five and six let's go over six years this is the future value we want now and then my cash flows are 1,050, uh, 1,350, 1,350, and 1,450. All right. And uh, so we could put this in as a calculator. How would we put it in a financial calculator? Normally the keys would be a cross or a financial calculator or N, and then R, and then present value and then oh, present value and then payment and then find the future value so in this case the end for this first one is going to be one two three four five here so i could type a five in here and it'd be perfectly fine i'm going to go ahead and let excel do it for me so i'm going to say it's equal to uh, the six and then i'm going to, I'm going to make that absolute by hitting f4 and then it puts the dollar signs in front of this address G6. And then I subtract one year. So I still get my five. And if I do it that way, I can copy it across and I cal calculate the other one. So let me put the formula in here. Okay, R is equal to 3%. I want this, when I copy this across, I want it to stay in the 3%. So I can have four. And I copy it across. And then the present value, well, it's going to be equal to a negative of this because it's the cash flow out of my pocket. So it's equal to a negative whatever this is. So this is money coming out of my pocket. That's why the arrow is pointing down on the cash flow diagram. And at the end, we're going to get money back. All right. The payment is zero for each one of these. And the future value is what we want to know. Okay, so that's what we're given. So we want to find, we want to find the future value uh, for each one of these, all right? And then, oops, what happened there? Hopefully it'll restart, we get it back. Okay, I'm just going to erase this. This is like an old one I did. All right, I, for some reason it died on me. But this is pretty much where we were left. Okay, and then we also want to find the future value. Uh, we want to find all of them together. So, uh, so. okay. Uh, all right, so to find these, I'm going to go equals future value. And then the first thing it asks for is a rate. So I'm going to click here. Number of periods, I'm going to click here. There's no payment. So I'm going to click that. I could just go like that. And that's the same thing. And then uh, and then finally, it wants the present value. And then I don't have to hit a parenthesis. We just hit that like that. And you copy that across. Uh, you might get number signs here. If you get number signs, you just highlight here and then double click. And it'll auto fit it. 
And then finally, we want to do the sum, so we equal sum um, of all these. And that would be my answer. Okay. Um, let me copy this formula. Okay. So there's an alternate way we could do it. I guess I, I got kind of messed up here because that should be, you know, I'm going to go insert here. This is what I'm going to find, right? I'm going to find the future value. And this is the solution. All right, so an alternate solution, we could do is do the net present value. So I go year, and then cash flow, and then I go one, two, three, and four. Oh, let me do it this way: one, two, three, and four. That doesn't need to be bold and underlined. Let me delete these, and then I could take these and copy them. So I go right click and go copy. I'm going to paste them transpose. So I'm going to paste them using this, so I can make those vertical. And then, uh, so that I can find the net present value, and that's going to equal to the net present value. And it wants a rate. And I'll just pick one of these rates. And then I just have to pick my four cash flow starting in year one. NPV always has to start in year one. And it gives me this. And finally, I can do, let me use this yellow right here, the future value is equal to the future value. Again, we're going to use a 3% for a rate. There's no pay, the number of periods. In this case, we're going six periods out. And then uh, there's no payment. And the present value is a negative this. And that gives you an alternate way to do it. Okay. So, uh, so with an NPV, what it does, it takes all these cash flows takes them back to year zero, and then I took them out to year six using future value. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Uh, the NPV is a little bit more advanced. Formula, you got to remember it always starts at year one. You can't start at year zero. If you have a cash flow at year zero, you just add that back in because if it's a year zero interest rate, it doesn't really matter. Okay, um, and hopefully that helps, and that's it for today. Thanks.